Hello, hello, and welcome to another adventure vlog. This time around, I'm gonna be taking you guys on a road trip from Miami all the way down to Key West, which is the southernmost point of all of continental USA. This is a really popular road trip here in the US just because of how much there is to do, see, and experience. Everything from wildlife activities to nature activities, amazing food, history, culture, luxury, and everything in between. I have handpicked some of the most amazing activities to show you guys, and I'll be sharing with you my honest feedback on each of those activities, as well as my first impressions, what to do, but most importantly, what not to do if you're also planning the same road trip. So let's get started, and I'm sure we'll have an amazing time together. One of the most memorable things about the Miami to Key West road trip is just how quickly a concrete jungle turns into nature, and then into traffic if you leave too late in the day like I did. Although I soon found out the traffic was caused by people stopping on the road to get a glimpse of a nearby accident. Before this grand 100 mile long road was built, the Keys used to be connected by a railroad, which you can still see today. And to make this journey even more picture perfect, why not stop at Marata Bay for lunch, followed by a very special dessert. The local dessert here is the Key Lime Pie. So we just stopped at a tiny little place, basically in the middle of the road, really unassuming. You might drive right past it, but it's got some of the best Key Lime Pie in the area. So I got myself a plain Key Lime Pie and they even have a key lime lemonade that they give you a little cookie on top. I love key lime pie, so I'm really excited to try it. And also check out this beautiful seating area that they've got behind the shop. It's got lovely music, a bunch of trees, so it's a really relaxing way to enjoy your pie. Okay, here we go. So creamy. Oh my gosh. You can really taste the lime zest. It has a kick but it's really sweet, super, super nice. Probably the creamiest key lime pie I've ever had. I didn't actually think that I'd be able to taste the difference between a lemonade and a lime -anade. Is that what it's called? Limeonade? But I can definitely come here. My cameraman has just totally interrupted my shot by asking, what is a key lime? Let's Google, what's a key lime? It's a lime with keys in it. Found our answer. As you continue the road trip with your limonade in hand, you'll probably notice boats everywhere. It's a perfect mode of transport here and places like Robbie's welcome visitor boats every day. Robbie's is a quirky spot for local shopping, food and activities. I think one of the other mistakes that I made was assuming that it would be pretty empty given the fact that it's off season right now. And it turns out it's not. It's incredibly busy. Honestly, it's absolutely packed. So I don't know what to tell you guys. Is Robbie's worth it? Is it not? Probably if it's this crowded, I'm gonna say no. But then at the same time, if you're coming with a family, it might be nice for the kids. They're huge! I expected them to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're lucky, you'll be greeted by an oversized visitor peacefully making his way around the docks. It's not uncommon to see manatees in Florida, but rarely so close. And needless to say, I was excited. I just saw a manatee. <laughs> I have a bit of an obsession with manatees. They're really big, but really cute. Kind of just want to hug them whenever I see them. Oh my gosh, these tarpons are not kidding around. They will snatch this from your hand, so I'm being a bit careful. Okay, I changed my mind, it's worth it. After seeing the manatee, after feeding the fish, I have changed my mind. You should definitely come to Robbie's no matter how crowded it is. Right, next stop now is a place that I've seen a lot about online, I've read about, and finally I get to see it. So I'm gonna take you with me and we're gonna go and continue this adventure. As you probably guessed, there is always room for the unexpected in the Florida Keys. Our next stop being no exception. That's right, the Florida Keys has its own turtle hospital and it's open to visitors. They take in injured turtles and restore them back to health before releasing them. They even have their own turtle ambulance. So far this year, they've welcomed 50 turtles and released 43. Whilst visiting the hospital, you'll get to learn how these animals are treated, discover the stories of individual turtles, and feed them at the end. For an animal lover like myself, this activity was definitely up there. Just adopted a turtle. I adopted one called Handsome Bowie. 
because he's actually come back for the second time they released him. He got hit by a boat again, so he's back here. It's not only us as humans that pollute the water that like the turtles ingest, which is bad for them, but it's everything from our sunscreen uh, to us making the algae that they eat toxic and poisonous for them. Everything from uh, them getting tumors because of it to boats going super fast, hitting turtles, dislodging their shells. I mean, there's so much that we do that honestly is really unnecessary that harm these beautiful turtles. So it's places like this that really make a difference and I'm happy to contribute. A short drive from the Turtle Hospital, one of the most pristine beaches in the area. It's actually a big misconception to think that the whole highway is going to be on water. A lot of it is through mangroves, you will see trees on either side. It's equally as gorgeous, but when you're driving on water, you're basically coming to the conclusion that this whole, whole, whole giant bridge is basically a huge highway on top of the ocean. It's really surreal, pretty fantastic, um, also given the fact that there is everything you need along the way. So yeah, pretty cool. Now, time for some luxury and relaxation. I've just checked into the Isla Bella Beach Resort and for now it's been exceptional. Like the moment you arrive, they give you a glass of champagne, everything smells amazing, everything feels totally luxurious. Yes, the price is on the high end in comparison to most hotels around here, but for me it's really been worth it because throughout the day you're constantly driving, you're constantly in either pretty crowded spaces or, you know, very touristy areas. So this for me has been truly incredibly relaxing and I can't wait to continue my day, go out for dinner and then come back and continue the adventure tomorrow. This part of the video is really unique, so I recommend you stick around. Let's just say that if you decide to book this once in a lifetime dinner experience, you'll first have to drive to Hidden Dock because the only way to get to this restaurant is by boat. So I mentioned a very special dinner earlier and the place where I've come to is called Little Palm Island and it's actually a very exclusive hotel with an equally exclusive uh, dinner and the only way you can get here is by boat. So that's an experience that absolutely blew me away because the boat is actually a replica of a 1950s wooden boat. So here I am sipping on my cocktail. Uh, we've got a whole menu planned out. We're going to have dinner very close to the beach and hopefully there's another surprise that I can't wait for you to see. So yeah, fingers crossed it happens. Now that is what I call a view. There's nothing obstructing this table. It's just the sunset, the beach and a menu that actually has a lot of choice which I wasn't expecting because it's a set price so I was kind of expecting them to bring out your dishes with you not really having a say but take a look at this as the sun set before me I took a moment to appreciate how connected to nature the Florida Keys felt the effortless beauty magnificent wildlife and natural diversity definitely leaves an impression and speaking of wildlife do you remember how I mentioned a surprise it's here <laughs> We are basically at the end of a deer refuge here. We're the last point of a deer refuge. So they swim across to get to the resort to get some nibbles in the evening. And to finish off an already perfect evening, some delicious food. Needless to say, Little Palm Island stole my heart. Good morning, everyone. Just checking out of Isla Bella Resort, uh, which is a shame that I only stayed for one night because honestly, it's a really, really great resort, which I highly recommend. The only downside that I noticed was that the service at breakfast was really slow, but everything apart from that has been really great. It is now time to continue our adventure, and now we are going to go to the tip of the Florida Keys, meaning the southernmost point of continental US, along with a few other things to see in that area, so stay tuned. Getting closer to Key West means passing through the bluest portion of water, so if you're thinking of turning back now, don't. You'll thank me later. Driving through Key West now, just got in and first impressions are that it's a lot more commercial than uh, some of the other Keys along the way in the sense that there is a Starbucks, a McDonald's, TJ Maxx, Sears. So you do feel that the uh, shops, amenities, brands are the same as in a big city, except you are basically on the southernmost point of continental US. And I'm going to show you that exact point in a little bit. 
All right, well, that is the southernmost point of continental US, but the queue to take a picture stretches on for, I'm gonna say 50, 60, maybe even 70 people. And what you guys shouldn't probably do, which is exactly what I did, is come here on a Sunday at midday during the summer months when there's a bunch of families with kids who have the exact same idea that you have. So I'm not sure that I wanna wait for 70 people to take a picture before me, so I'm not gonna do the line, uh, but I am gonna show you the little point from here, which is where everyone wants to get to. Um, so yeah, I don't think this is worth your time if there's a line that's that long, but just to say that you've been here is pretty cool, so I think I'll leave it at that. And very unsurprisingly, everything around that point is called the southernmost something. Southernmost cafe, southernmost resort, southernmost uh, hotel, southernmost guest house. Also, it's a lot more residential than some of the other keys. And you can actually see people living their daily lives, riding their bikes, walking their dogs, taking care of their homes. I feel that that was what was missing in the other keys, where it was only based around tourism. Here you actually get to see a bit of local life, which is great. Key West is also home to Hemingway's house, as well as a famous fort. However, I chose to walk around the small streets as I was fascinated by the shops, local artworks, and cafes, one of which was my choice for a smoothie stop. I also loved exploring the port, which once again reminds us of the key role boats play in the area, no pun intended. Such beautiful buildings around here, it's all really cute quaint, colorful, reminds me of um, St. Augustine a little bit, another place in Florida and a vlog that I'll link in the description below. Look at that. I feel the real beauty of Key West is these roads though, like just driving through and seeing all the greenery surrounded by the beautiful architecture, very colorful, I don't know, it just makes you happy and for me that's what you should come see instead of the more touristy things which are way overcrowded. Right, so I'm walking along the streets of Key West. It's still absolutely gorgeous and stunning, but I'm realizing that the time has come for me to head back to Miami because if the traffic is as bad as it was yesterday in some areas, uh, that means that it'll take us at least four to five hours to get back. So what sort of conclusion can I make from this road trip that I've just done and what information can be useful for you if you're planning the same thing? So first things first, I don't know when you're planning to come, but coming on a weekend in the summer months is probably not a good idea and I'm not saying that only because of the scorching heat but also because of the crowds that you've seen and of the traffic that you'll experience if you do that. The second thing is that be prepared for a lot of commercial and tourist oriented things so you're not going to get a very authentic experience like you would in some of my European vlogs. This is more of an experience where you get to enjoy the things that have been man-made and built for your pleasure and enjoyment. So I think that is what I expected which is why I don't mind at all and plus we got that nice mix of uh, you know busy touristy areas and then luxury with the dinner and with the resort that we stayed at both of which i highly recommend is a weekend enough to see the florida keys yes but also how long is a piece of string you can do it all in a day you can do it in a weekend or you can take a week and then see a lot more things and experience every activity for a longer period of time i just sort of picked out the ones that i thought would be uh, most enjoyable to myself and probably best for you guys to see as well and then i did those but obviously there's hundreds of different things you can do in the Florida Keys. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Keep smiling, and I'll see you next time. How very fitting with today's events.